Welcome back. In this video we're going to code the read use case for our sci-fi library database application example. In this video you will learn how to use the JDBC connection class to connect to a database. You'll learn how to use the JDBC prepare statement class to send commands to a database. And you'll learn how to work with the JDBC result set to process the query's results. Let's start by going ahead and making our model class. Here we see the book UML class diagram. We'll deviate it just a little bit by adding a, another instance variable to this picture called book ID, which will be an int. We'll do this quickly. We're going to right click on the model to create a new Java class. In the dialog, we'll give the name of our class the name book. We'll make sure it's public, no need for a main, and it will generate comments. After a moment, the book class, such as it is, will be opened in the editor. Let's double tap on the tab. We'll start by making our instance variables. We're going to have a private int book ID private string author private string title and finally we'll have private int pages to stand for the number of pages. We're going to make this quick and easy. It's a very simple model class so let's use source. Let's generate first our constructor. Let's get the first one from all the fields. Let's generate a second con Structure uses no fields simply to have a default constructor. If we use this default constructor, the user will need to use the getter, the setters, to be able to set the values. Let's use generate getters and setters, and let's generate getters and setters for all four of our field level variables. And finally, let's add a two string. Select all four of our variables and hit OK. So at this point, we should have a book class that we can use to represent any book that we need to in our application. Here we see our use case for reading the data. We've created one of the components in this use case, namely the book class. We need to create at least three more. We're actually going to create four we'll need something to get that request going to begin with. So we'll use the index.jsp for that. But after that, we'll create a read servlet in the controllers package. We'll create a read query class, and we'll put that in our DB helpers package. And we'll also create the view for the read, and we'll put that as a JSP in the web content folder. So let's start by creating a JSP just to handle our initial request. We'll call this one index.jsp, put it directly in the web content folder. Double click here. Let's put a title. Ultimate Sci-Fi Library. Entry page. I think I'll also make that a headline in the body of my HTML. Let's put a simple hyperlink that when clicked will send a request to our servlet to do a read. A href equals just say read. That'll become clear in a moment. And we'll say see the book list something for the user to look at. That should be enough for that. Simply if we click on this, a request will be sent to our server using a get, because remember that's the default for a hyperlink, and it will say read. The next component we need to create will be what the read hyperlink will go to, namely the read servlet. Right click on controllers, Select New and pick a servlet. We'll call this one our read servlet for lack of a better name. Select Next. 
We can leave the name as read servlet. Let's change the UR mapping. Remember our read hyperlink back in index.jsp. We need to edit the URL mapping to match so that this is the servlet that is called when that hyperlink is clicked. Hit OK. Then hit Finish. You see that the read servlet has been added to the controller's package and the read servlet.java file now shows up in our editor. Let's go ahead and remove the doPost method. We're only going to work with gets in this particular application. Recall that you have to provide one or the other or both, but you do not have to provide both. In the servlet we're going to do a couple things. We're going to create a read db helper object to perform our query. We're going to get the query results from the db helper object as an HTML table. Then we'll dispatch to the read view to show the table in the browser. Now since we don't have a DB helper object, I suggest we create that first, then we'll come back here and know how to run it. So our DB helper object will be in our DB helpers package. Let's right click on that, hit new. This will be a Java class. Okay. We'll call this one simply read query. Don't need a main, let's generate comments and hit finish. Here we see in the editor our read query. The read query needs to be able to create a connection, then create a prepared statement with the query, execute the query, and then deal with the results. In order to do that, it's helpful to use a few of our database objects as instance variables. Namely, a connection object. We'll call ours connection. Of course, we'll make it private. Notice an error is indicated for our connection class. If you put the cursor over that, you should quickly see that one of the things we can do is to import the connection. Be very careful here. We're going to get this one from the java.sql package, because that's the one that's immediately available to us. There are other connections, but this is the one that works best for our example. And you can see at the top that that connection has been imported. In addition, it will be helpful for us if our results set object from the JDBC, which will hold the results of our query, is also set as an instance variable. So we'll go ahead and do that now. Again, we see that the result set needs to be imported. Our class, like all Java classes, needs a constructor. Type our constructor as public read query. Let's add a few parameters. To connect a database, we're going to need the URL for the database, the username, and the password. Let's make this so that we can pass these from the servlet. String db name to pass the name of the database. String uname to pass the username. And string pwd to hold the password. So at this point, when a read query is created, we'll pass in the database name, the username, and the password, and these are stored as strings. To actually create the connection, we need more for the database name. So let's create a local variable in the connector called URL, represents the path to the database. We're going to set that equal to JDBC, that's our technology on the application side, colon, MySQL saying that we're using the MySQL technology on the database side, colon. Now we need the URL path to the database. Since I'm running that on my local MySQL server on my computer, that would be localhost, and I'm going to include the port number that I'm using, and then I will need to add the DB name. So with this new string, what we're going to be providing as we create a connection to the database is a URL in the form of the technology on the server side, the technology on the database side, along with the web type path to the database. 
Yours may vary if you use a different database or if you use a different port on your local host or finally if the path to your database is a URL because it's posted somewhere else on the internet. Now we have enough to instantiate the connection. Type this dot, we'll pick connection, equals. Now because we have the driver attached to our project, there's a few classes within that which you can use that will help us set up this connection. So type driver manager dot. We're going to use get connection. We'll use the one that takes three parameters. We're first going to provide the URL, then the username, and then the password. Mostly so far so good, but we do see that there's an error message associated with this particular call to the driver manager get connection method. If we hover over that, we see that an unhandled exception type, SQL exception. Two possible fixes. We can either throw this exception to the calling routine, which in our case would be the servlet, and it would mean that we'd have to handle any exceptions at that point. Or we could surround with the try catch meaning try this, but if we get a SQL exception, we need to do some other code. So let's choose that one. So surround with a try catch. Notice the try catch block has been used to surround our connection statement, and the catch has automatically determined that it needs to catch a SQL exception. The only code here is something printing things to a stack trace. I'm going to leave that for our purposes, but I could add more if I wanted to, for instance, send a message to the user that there was an error. I could add the code that will do that. This is enough for our constructor. When the read query is constructed, a connection object will be created, and we're ready to run any kind of SQL we want over this connection. Let's write a method that will let us execute the query. Type public void do read. I'd like to write a simple read query or select statement that will read all the data from the books table. So let's create a string. Let's call it query equals select star from books. The next thing we need to do is, is to create a prepared statement object which we can use to send our query commands. We're using the prepared statement class as opposed to the statement class of the JDBC because it's more secure, especially when you're included user provided data into the query. So declare a prepared statement object. Let's just call this PS for short. Equals. Now this is created from our connection. So let's call our connection object. Hit dot type a P and we should eventually see prepared statement. Let's pick the one that takes one string object and then let's provide it our query string. We see that there's an error under prepared statement. Let's hover over that and let's import the prepared statement from the java.sql package. One error is cleared up but a second one has appeared. We see that this also could throw a SQL exception so we need to surround it with a try catch. At this point, our prepared statement has the simple select star from books query. More complex queries might require us to alter or adjust the prepared statement to include user data. In this case, we're done with the query, so we can now execute the query to read the results of it from the database. So let's type results. Remember, this is our result sets declared as an instance variable for the class. PS dot execute query. Execute query is the method that you're going to want to use when you're doing a read query on the database. If you were doing a create, update, or delete, you would use execute update. So at this point, we have basically three-fourths of our read query class created. We have our instance variables. We have a constructor that when a read query object is instantiated, will go ahead and make a connection to the database. We have a do read method that when this is called will perform the query. Lastly, we need some type of method to process our data. I'm going to create one that will return a string that's an HTML table. So let's do public string get HTML table. Here we're going to process the result set to create an HTML table.
currently have an error, so we need to have a return statement. Let's first create string table. Store that. And let's put return table, which will be at the end of the method. To work with that method, we need to move through the result set. Let's think about the result set. When the result set is created, it's basically an in-memory table that matches the query. At the beginning when the result set is created, think of a pointer that points before the first record, maybe at the field name row. In order to read a particular record, we need to move the pointer to that record, as we might if we're clicking and selecting the first record. If we want to read a different record, we'd move the pointer there. Fortunately, the result set comes with methods that will allow us to do that, particularly the dot next method. The dot next method will move the pointer to the next record from wherever it currently is to the next record. In addition, once it moves there, if a record exists at the new location for the pointer, we'll get a Boolean value of true. If, for instance, we move the pointer from 13, in this case, to the next, we'll find that no record exists and we'll get a Boolean value of false. So we can use the next method to both move the pointer and test whether a new record is there. A nice way to do that is just to do while results.next. Again, we need to surround this block with a try catch because it might throw a SQL exception. Recall that we're going to create an HTML table. So the rows of the table will be handled inside a loop because we're going to have multiple rows, but we're going to have to start the table. So just above the while loop, let's go ahead and add the HTML table tag. We're going to keep ours very simple. Let's also, just after the while loop, add the ending tag. As we move through the loop, looking at each record, let's create a book object. So we have a book object. We're going to need to import it from our model. And we need to use the setters to set values. Well, let's set the book ID. That's the book ID from the current place in our database. So the book ID needs to come from results. Type results, then put a dot and hit get. Notice the list here. We have a bunch of get methods. All the get methods start with the word get, and many of them end with a data type, such as get int. Our book ID is an int, so we can use that one. You want to pick the get with the appropriate data type for the data that you're trying to get from the database record. And we can either supply a column index, which would be 1 in this case, or we could simply use the field name. So what are we doing here? From the results set, because we used results next, we're pointing at a record. If we were not pointing at a record, results.next would be false, and we would not be inside the loop. The current record, we're using a get int, and we're saying get the value that's in the column for book ID. Just to see how we might do that a little bit differently, let's set the title. The title is in the second column of our database and it's a string. So type results dot get string and let's put a 2 to represent the second column. We also need to get the author which is in the third column is also a string and finally the number of pages. another int. Let's get this from column 4. In any of those cases I could have used the field name like I did with book ID. I just wanted to show you two different ways we can get the values from the result set using the column index or the column field name. Now we have a book. Let's use that book object to add data to the HTML table. Table plus equal table row. Of course I will need to end the row before I'm outside of the loop. Let's just show table plus equal. So for each data value I need a TD tag.
and an ending TD tag. And for now, let's just show the title, author, and pages for our book. Table plus equal book dot get title. Let's copy this set of statements to make our next two table cells. We need to change our method from get title to get author and our final one to get pages. I think that about does it for our read. Just to review, we create a connection. In this case, the first thing that happens when we create the read query because it's part of the constructor. We use the connection to make a prepared statement and set it up using the query. And then we use the prepared statement to execute the query and provide us with the result set. And then we can process the results. And in this case, we use it to create a book object and we add that book object to an HTML table. In the read servlet, we need to create a DB helper. Read query. Let's call that RQ equals new read query. Recall we're going to provide three items. The name of the database, in my case that's SciF library. The username, in my case that's root. And the password, in my case that is also root. These may vary on your system depending on what username or password you use to set up your MySQL installation. Notice I need to import read query from my DB helpers package. We need to make sure that the query happens. So let's do RQ dot do read. Now our RQ should have a result set that holds the value of this read query. Let's get those results by calling string table equals RQ dot get HTML table. Now here in the servlet we should have an HTML table with the values. Now we're going to dispatch to the read view. In order to be able to see it in the JSP we're going to need to pass this table along with it. So let's do request.set attribute. We'll call it table and we'll provide it the table value that we currently have make a variable called URL equals let's go to read.jsp which we haven't yet created let's create a request dispatcher object call it dispatcher for short from the request dot get request dispatcher and we'll hand our URL. Notice we need to import the request dispatcher then we'll use the dispatcher to dispatch to the JSP and send along the request and response objects for this request. Final component before we can test this set of components for our read use cases, we need a read.jsp file. Right click on web content, hit new. This time select JSP. Let's call this read.jsp and hit finish. Let's go back to our index.jsp and copy the title. Put that as the title in here. This is no longer the entry page though. This is a list of our books, so let's call it book list. Let's make that a headline on the page as well. Call in the servlet using the read query db helper and the book class. We created an HTML table and we store that as an attribute on the request. So before we can actually display it, we need to get that attribute off of the request. So let's go to the top and add our Java delimiters. Let's create a string 
table to hold a local version of the table, request dot get attribute, and we labeled it table as well. Thing, you see an error message. The error message says type mismatch cannot convert from object to string. So recall that I need to cast this back to the intended object size. Finally, we need to show this table in the browser. So let's move down to the body and let's put our special print statement for a JSP. The Java delimiter is followed immediately by a single equal sign and let's print out the value of table. So to review, index, we click on a hyperlink to see the book list. That goes to read servlet. In the read servlet, we've created a DB helper. The DB helper, we can call the do read method to have it do its query, and then we can get an HTML table based on its results. Once we have that, we can add it as an attribute to the request, then forward control down to our read.jsp. With our read.jsp, we get the table and we display it. So this should show the current data in the database. One quick look to familiarize ourselves with the data in the database before we run and test our code. Notice the first entry is Cryptonomicon, the last Perdido Street Station, and various other names in between. Let's run to test our application. Right click on Project. If you want to build it manually, do so. Right click on Project again, Run As, Run On Server. Keep in mind if you're database server is not running, you may receive errors at this point. So don't forget to start the database server before testing your code. Here we see our entry page with our single link. Click on the link, it should send a request to our servlet, which will use the DB helper to make a query. The query will be returned as an HTML table, which we'll see in the next page. In this video, you've seen how to use the JDBC Connection class to connect to a database. You've learned how to use the JDBC Prepare Statement class to send commands to a database. And you've learned how to work with the JDBC Result Set to process the query results. This has been a Piercy production.